that I should lose again. <laughs> How disappointing. Never have I understood those around me, understood their obsessions. Besieged by their banality, the world is a mire of tedium and trivialities. But in these fleeting moments, there is a spark, blinding, brilliant. Too soon. What of you, my mirror, born into this world, bestowed name, bid to seek out strife and adventure? Was this life a gift or a burden? Did you find fulfillment?
Nigeria. I must tend to open your please. Come on, and please. <laughs> you can't leave us not like this if you do I'll never forgive you oh come on open your eyes and get up Are you... are you with us? Oh, thank the heavens. For a moment we thought... After what you've done, you're the last person <laughs> to be asking that. <laughs> you... How can you keep your promise if you're not here? Another fine show you've put on, my friend. A fine show, indeed. What were you thinking, fighting alone? Never do that again. My poor heart couldn't bear it. Put yourself in our place. If you hadn't returned, how do you think we would feel? And if that sounds harsh, it's because we care. We tended to thy wounds as best we could. But how is the pain? That is gladdening. Grievous as thine injuries were, however, I would counsel repose for a time. Gladdening! There's nothing gladdening about this! When Meteon appeared in here and told us that you were right behind her, we all got our hopes up. But you never came! And when you finally deign to appear, you're within an ilm of your life! Damn you! Damn you for making us worry! our return at once. <laughs> I hope you're ready. <laughs> While you were unconscious, we set out from Ultima Thule, you see. Can you stand? If so, you may wish to see what's outside.
We're home, my friend. We're home. Truly. They've Huzzah! done it! Welcome home. Ah! Yes!
Dearest mother, dearest father, this letter will be the very last that I write to you from the rising stones. As I commit these words to parchment, I fondly recall my journey as a scion. From the time I first walked into the Order's former halls, to the time I set forth to forestall the final days. At the farthest reaches of the Sea of Stars, we fought the battle of our lives. Fought against despair itself, a veritable maelstrom of it, fed by the resignation that dwelled in the hearts of beings not so unlike ourselves. Full oft have I harboured the same malaise, have I been brought to my knees, crushed by the weight of sorrow and defeat, convinced that I will never rise again. However, I have also known many moments of unbridled joy and happiness. By this truth do I find hope within, blooming resplendent like the Elpis flower. And thus do I endure. Do I look forward to creating more memories with my friends and loved ones. For from these fertile seeds, yet more hope shall spring forth. And they will grow to become shining lights that illuminate the dark. Thus believing, I leave the rising stones behind, as will my comrades. For, as we have decided, after careful deliberation, we are disbanding the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. There you are, Alphano. Everyone is already gathered in the foyer. My apologies. I'll be right there. At least, that is what the story will be. Sorry to keep you all waiting. What could you possibly have left to do now? Oh, just a letter. I imagine it will be a while before we can gather like this again. So it must be, if we're to keep up appearances. From now on, it falls to the Grand Company of Eorzea and its allies to deal with the realm's crises. Meanwhile, we shall return to our erstwhile ways. Retreating from plain sight, 
to take our place in the shadows once more. Indeed. For the foreseeable future, I expect that we must work independently as we seek out problems that want for solving. But a day will come when we face another great challenge, and we will face it together, as we always have. As much as I look forward to that day, I do hope it doesn't come any time soon. Well, formal association or no, if any of you should require my services, you need but ask. I'll be glad to keep my lance arm honed. I'll hold you to that. So you had better keep your link pearl on hand. So you really mean to stay, Tataru? Ah, oh, someone has to keep the Rising Stones in proper order. And even a super-secret organization requires a super-secret base of operations. To the rest of the world, it will be naught more than a workshop for Eorzea's foremost up-and-coming artisan. If you thought our coffers were full to bursting before, just wait till I can devote myself wholly to the crafts. Plotting to build a mercantile empire to rival that of Lord Lodorito, are we? <laughs> I, for one, look forward to your future successes, Tataru. As do I our next meeting. And with that, I believe it is past time you all made ready to depart. Leave no preparations undone or words unsaid, all right? Now, off with you. spoken with our comrades. Though this parting be not forevermore, it is nonetheless occasion for sorrow. A pin to a pixie's path, the navigation of such farewells is a perilous endeavor indeed. For their part, however, the law has embarked upon a new beginning. Though bereft of its purpose as a vessel, the moon yet remained hospitable for the creatures of the theorists. Thus, the lunar visitors convened with the farm intent upon assigning some new and beneficial role to our solitary satellite. Yet, ere that may come to pass, there is much and more each party must learn of the other, a process which doth promise to be eventful indeed. To that end, a cadre of Lothrids hath gleefully dispersed across our lands in the name of mutual understanding. Hydaelyn, tis said, did imbue them with her love for all things born of the star. It is Vinod's own nature, I believe, which doth manifest in this irrepressible, inexhaustible curiosity of theirs. Having witnessed that which they strove to achieve, I wish most keenly for their long labors to be rewarded, that their abiding affection for man result in a boon for all. Moreover, I hope to continue our acquaintance and share in such knowledge as they see fit to impart. You are first, the first to truly understand them.
Picked us that, I think so. The Lawbirds are certainly possessed of a unique outlook, and it hath been my pleasure to act as their facilitator upon this star. Mayhap I might yet serve as a bridge betwixt them and their fellow man, as when Brita once did for me. That would have been help, help for me not be so dang tired. Ah, but I shall digress no further. This day should belong to the science of the Semitons, O oh, my incomparable companions. Oft times hath mine reticence caused thee grief, and my actions spurred allies to suspect the betrayal. Yet here amongst you I still stand. No amount of words could express my gratitude for thine acceptance and forgiveness. Thus instead I do proffer my humble support. Be it unto the deepest abyss or the highest heavens. Even if I must needs founder to cross the stormy seas, ever shall I answer thy summons. It would have helped to not be so dang tired if it hadn't taken 40 minutes to clear Ensinger. Aria, I've seen your preparations, have you? I'm just making our sweep of my belongings. Wouldn't do to find I forgot something halfway to my destination. Well, in case you haven't heard, we received new reports detailing the devastation caused by the final days. Here's the situation as grave as the land surrounding the bounty where the sky first began to burn. So that the cloudy was deserted in the far north, and Garland in the frozen lands beyond. We also have reports of the heavens catching fire in isolated locations, one of which was an area in the northern empty. Had the quest taken any longer, Charlene and two may have come under threat. Thank goodness it's over now. To be sure, blasphemies and lesser beasts may still be roaming about, but these localized crises should be well within the capacities of each nation to handle on their own. Scions are no longer needed. Which isn't to say that we won't help out where we can, of course, as individuals. No more of this order business. For my part, I'll be heading to Garlemo with Alpha now. They were among the force affected and still need all the help they can get. It won't be easy. An inevitable part of aiding those in need is going face to face with tragedy. Knowing it doesn't make it any easier though. That I'll curse my weakness, my inability to fix every problem and save every lost soul. But no matter how much it hurts, I won't give up. I'll do what I can for as many people as I can, begrudging no effort. And should I find myself discouraged, I'll remember you. Think back fondly to one of your many moments of triumph and the accompanying determined expression. Even those that still annoy me in retrospect, like when you activated a teleporter without warning. And should you hear about me and what you remember too, remember that I'm out there somewhere trying my very best. I think you can keep up with me. <laughs> you asked for it, so you had better watch out. Oh, yes. The next time we meet, I'll be vastly improved. So don't be surprised when you find yourself marveling at me. So we'll just go around the room. Oh, Arya, pray forgive me for delaying the gathering. I was writing a letter, you see, to my parents. As busy as father has been, mm, tending to the aftermath of the exodus, he has been good enough to show concern for the Zions. Besides, I have made them worry enough for a lifetime. Henceforth, I will endeavor to write as often as I am able. A little effort to set their minds at ease while we continue to be away from Charlian. But Alizé and I are off to assist with Garlemald's recovery, you see. Though uncertainty remains over what will become of the nation, we cannot well leave the capital in its present state. We rejoin those members of the Elzebar contingent who was still stationed there. The Shadow and Maxima helmed their relief effort with support from our allies, the people of Garlemald among them. They will gradually be joined by those who have finished treating the temperate across the lands. Thus you must understand, we do not seek to redemption for failing with Sinia and her sister, as a burden we must always bear. Nay, we go because of the truth of Lord Kintus' words. The 
truth that whatever ideals individuals may espouse, nations are not moved to action unless they stand to benefit. For the foreseeable future, the fallen empire will be at the mercy of both internal and external forces. And though I do not doubt the intentions of the contingent, with greater powers involved in the relief effort, our allies may well find themselves drawn into a political agenda. In going, we seek to ensure that the needs of the people come first, to understand their hearts that we might better help them to begin anew. You'd best write me too. Are you letters? Of course we'd be glad to do so. But we speak large still where you to come and visit, and I believe I speak for Alize as well. For fairly as long as I've been in the yards yet, you've been on my side, watching over me, in good times and in bad. How many times have we gathered to share tidings? None could possibly keep count. The world is changing and will continue to do so. Yet no matter what the future brings, I hope that I can ever look to you. In good times and in bad. As a dependable comrade and dear friend both. Thank you, Arya, from the bottom of my heart. Oh, oh Arya, how are you feeling? Any lingering aches or pains? I can't apologize enough for sending Xenos to find you an Ultima Thule. When he came to me and Charlie and I was truly torn. As ever, there was only one thing on his mind. Forced to make a decision, I reasoned that if he would not be deterred from seeking you out, he might at least aid us in our cause, and so I struck a bargain. In the end, he was true to his word, and you defeated him despite your earlier exertions. But knowing the state you were found in, it could have ended very differently. My decision almost cost you your life, and no words could express the remorse I feel. That was it for me. And so did everyone. I'm so sorry, Arya. Time and time again, I've been made to feel woefully inadequate. I wasn't much use in battle, nor could I face the farm without my nerves getting the better of me. I've always felt the you and you the others. I must and will do better. And I shall begin with the restoration of the students of Eldessian. Through our work, Charlie and will strengthen those ties with other nations that we may be better prepared to face whatever threats arise in the future. Of course, this isn't something I can accomplish alone, but thankfully I have the staunchest of help in Raha and Ojika and our other remaining members. Together we'll continue Grandfather's work. As before, certain commissions will take us to dangerous locales and we may need to call upon seasoned adventurers. Such times, you might be willing to assist us, not because you feel obliged, mind you, but because you feel allure for the task itself. Marvelous. Should something of interest arise, I won't hesitate to reach out to you. So that day, I shall endeavor to become a more dependable comrade. more to go. <sighs> ah, our champion and savior. I was beginning to think my chance for an audience would never come. Oh, that sounded more amusing in my head. Speaking of heads, I was worried about yours, and the rest of you for that matter, on the Mandai Trust. Glad to hear it. You were in a bad way, and healing magics or no, I'm impressed how by how swiftly you've recovered. Then again, tis hardly the first time you've cheated death. Your strength of will has never failed to astonish me. Look at what you've accomplished. Medion defeated, her song of oblivion cut short. Source and all her reflections delivered from the final days. If you had faltered at the last, then all hope would have been lost. But you held fast. Now Reem has a tomorrow to look forward to, and I could ask for no greater gift than that. As for a lesser gift, however, the next time you see her, I'd appreciate you not describing my tribal plans with Urion today as aimless wandering. What purpose in our roaming, after all? Keeping an eye on things in the absence of the silence on the world stage. 
There will never be an end to the little problems that go untended by nations. We'll do our best to help out where and when we can. Which I suppose in the it is an approach not far removed from aimless wandering when you get down to it. Perhaps you could tell her I'm faring well. Leave it at that. Eh? No need to mention this feeling of being uprooted. I've never been one to stand still for long, but when I think of home, it is a rising stones which comes to mind. How many times have we set out from this base, thence to return when our work was done? On the day the scions came together, I only hoped for Minfili to find the place where she belonged. Never did I expect to find one here for myself. Indulge me, Arya. I have a question for you, and imagine Minfili herself is asking. Are you glad you joined the scions? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can honestly say the same thing. But all good things must come to an end, at least for a time. Should you need a helping hand for infiltration or reconnaissance, you know who to ask. I'll come running, and you'll likely get a certain funny talking fortune teller into the bargain. If you have something to say, then out with it. Just wonder how you'll earn your keep now. Uh, you talk as if the science of solution was more than mere pretense. There may be fewer calls to action, but we should be compensated as before. Why are you so concerned for me anyway? In any case, I do not want for options, even if some are worse than others. Also, did Amor hear about our disbandment and he offered me a position as a guardsman in the Imperian district? As a former Azure Dragoon, I'm guaranteed to be too popular, he said. Who's he take me for? Even without his meddling, I'm perfectly capable of finding employment and have! Some days ago, a Hanish envoy arrived with word from Vritra, who warned request my presence as soon as things have settled here. It's not deemed to mention why I'm needed, but it pertains to dragons, like as not. In Thabnir, like elsewhere, the phenomenon caused by the final days abated when you defeated Medion. But it was too late for those who had already transformed, life is beginning to return to normal for the survivors. Of those who sought refuge in Charlian, most have already returned home. But many do not have a home to return to, nor loved ones. By the range between Vritra and the form, such souls may remain in Charlian if they wish to work and study. Vritra was always the Sawtrop in truth. It's gratifying to see him become one in name as well. One who has the complete confidence of his people, if the envoy's tone was any indication. Hmm, not since I often find myself speaking favorably of dragons of late. Not so long ago, I would have assumed his benevolence hid ulterior motives. It is clear he cares for his people, and they in turn revere him. To know such a nation may flourish is comforting. Vritra's kin sought release from conflict. So weary were they of the suffering it brought, they surrendered to oblivion. The Midgard Stormer did not give, didn't give up, in hope he made the journey to distant Etheris with his clutch of eggs. And though his progeny went on to be embroiled in conflict with men, there were times when they transcended hatred to abide in harmony. That is their legacy and their triumph. In my lands, I feel the weight of their struggle and the strength of their resolve. That lends me strength. These things I might never have learned had I not joined you. Should you ever have need of me, I will come. At the very least, it might be an opportunity to earn coin. Might you have a moment to talk? One of the, the 
long as I'm stepping away from the public eye, I'd love to consider what new endeavors I might pursue. After speaking with Crow, I've decided I'll be assisting her in rebuilding the students of Aldesium. Not only am I indebted to Master Galu for giving me a new home, but had her order never existed, I would have never set foot within the Crystal Tower. How different my life might have been. I never would have never met you, never become caretaker of the tower, never become a scion. You gave me the chance to do so much good, and I hope to continue to do so with the students. For another benefit, new mysteries often find their way to our doorsteps. Mysteries that could prove ideal for fulfilling our promise. We're going to do adventure together, unlike any we've experienced before. Whenever you have the time and inclination, my friend, I stand ready to accompany you in unto the unknown. Do you recall in the realm of the Omicrons when I asked you if you thought it may someday be mentioned in your epic? Well, it is true that to earn a place at your side would be the stuff of dreams. In the end, nothing would give me greater joy than to stand with you in the here and now. It need to be some grand endeavor. There need to be a promise. Whenever adventure calls, I won't hesitate to invite you. I hope that you will do the same for me. As long as you don't overexert yourself. <laughs> I know, I know. I can always hear Lena and Beck Lug's voices each time you remind me. As much as we have already seen, there's still so much we haven't. Who knows? Perhaps we'll even encounter survivors of the Omicron somewhere out there. After all, given how they took to the stars, it isn't impossible that some has found themselves far from home. And should we encounter a wayward traveler awaiting commands that will never come? I would bid them seek adventure with someone, and with that partner find a new purpose, a new dream. <laughs> Omega. I mean, what? For if crystals can hold fast dreams, why not Omicrons? Omega and Alpha. Hmm. I mean, what? Somewhere your, wherever your plans may lead, do not hesitate to send word. And should a commission of interest come my way, you will be the first to know. Last one, guys. We're almost there. Oh, are we seeing our farewells too? I haven't at present planned on the journey of any great length. Nothing but averse to a moment or two of quiet reminiscence. In fact, there was something I've been meaning to ask you, something that had been in my thoughts since the last things of the final stage sub subsided. During our travels, we witnessed more than a lifetime's worth of oddities and spectacles, more than can be easily recalled or remembered. Nestled amongst those memories are certain essential facts, the history of a theorist and the ancients, glimpses of the Aea, of their culture and philosophy. Rather than simply hoard such treasures in my mind, I wonder if I should not be disseminating them in formal records for wider consumption. When needed, I have pen reports and prepared briefings, but ever have I balked at the idea of binding the subject of my studies to books or a tablet. Truth is given shape and interpretation. When we seek, out, seek to capture it with our words, it is invariably molded into a fit of narrative, no matter how well intentioned the rendering. An event is described as sad, a summation which fa fails to express emotional complexity. The world on the page is what endears, a pale shadow of reality. Throughout history, some have deliberately embellished the truth. I believe many, if not most, deviations are the result of similar linguistic shortcomings, calling one upon the other until the end result is unrecognizable from its origin. Which is why I fear that writing account in my own words would be akin to diluting fine water with wine. Fine wine with water! 
Get even the potential for corrupted meaning, I do of course realize the importance of keeping written records. Without them, my search for wisdom would be a painful affair indeed. But what say you on this matter? Should I take up the quill? Reflect upon those experiences only we have shared and seek to preserve them for posterity? Hi, let them be read and remembered. Is there any other answer? Like, it's good to keep record. Very well then, I shall endeavor the pen with the can of the Aya, and the ancients, and so many other wonders. I'm no scribe, but we have less polished work, and more reordering of scattered notes. In any case, I feel much better for having sought your opinion. Let's warn on the basis, we tend to overthink such things. I will otherwise return the following where my curiosity leads. After all, a safe method of travel to the first yet eludes me, and our venture into the great expanse is prompted with an entirely new set of questions. Should you stumble into the unknown, or struggle with some impenetrable mystery? Know that I'm at your beck and call. It never hurts to see things from a different perspective, and mine is rather different from most. Yay! We're there! So what can you feel, have you? So I'm thinking to send everyone off. Please! With your permission, then. Your attention, please! Risk is by the mood. The time for departure is upon us. My capacity as your receptionist, I bid you all safe journeys. Till next we meet, be well. I suppose we're off to Garlemald then. Though we ought to speak with Lord Emmerich first. If he's received word of any recent developments, we need to know. It would be prudent to purchase some warmer clothes at least. Mayhap we can pick up a few souvenirs for Ulysses and the others while we're at it. Where will you all be heading next? Dravania. There is a book I've been meaning to borrow from the great Google Library. And I can think of at least one person who will be most displeased should I fail to visit before leaving. We've no particular destination in mind, but we do intend to stop in Charlia before we set off. We had thought to ask after the Loperitz. I am curious as to how well those who chose to remain are adapting to their changed circumstances. Might we accompany you then? Raha and I were planning to return to the Baldessian Annex. Commissions have been piling up in our absence, and they must be dealt with ere we begin our work in earnest. Estinian, you will return to Rads at Harn, will you not? Aye, for Vritra's benefit, though I've yet to hear the details, I may not stay long. I see. Then it is here the Scions at last part ways, each to some far-flung corner of the realm. Perhaps, but I believe one of our number, a rather important one at that, has yet to divulge her plans. Quite right. Indeed. 
Fair point. So, what's next for our humble adventurer? Yet stand tall, my friend. Our journey will never end. The constancy of this place never ceases to amaze me. An ocean of souls, shimmering and eternal. And yet, something stirs. Yes, steeped in darkness, deep as starless night, the beast hungers. Alas, I dare not investigate in earnest before the coming of my guiding star, as she foretold. We shall descend to the depths, you and I, to confront the dread beast pandemonium. Oh, the sights we shall see. The sights we shall see. You complete the main scenario quest and walker quest to unlock new content become available in Old Charlian. Additionally, you may now enter the dead ends with a party of NPC avatars. Rest well, champion of Aetherus, for many and more adventures await you. Now, if only, you know, and Singer had to take 50 minutes. Might not be so dead tired. On a work night! <laughs> Whew. Um, what did I just... Uh, Fan for it. Fan for it. Anyway. In the next part, we will, I guess, delve into the patch 6.0 dungeons. Um, yeah. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing. If you really enjoy it, consider supporting the channel. All support really helps to keep being content like this and more. You can find the links for that in the description, along with links to me on social media. So thank you again for watching, and until next time, this is Rinium T signing out. Bye!